Consider using a side grip when you shift because there are some advantages to gripping the shifter from the side. First of all, it's easy to manipulate the splitter when it's always between your second and third fingers and you have your thumb on top of the shifter for leverage. But here's a better reason. Shifting from sixth to seventh. New students sometimes accidentally shift to ninth when they're trying to hit seventh. Here's one way to fix that. In sixth gear, use the bottom part of your hand to push the shifter to neutral. Then allow the spring to push the shifter to the middle soft wall. Then push straight forward to seventh. When the spring pushes the shifter to the middle, you'll feel it in the palm of your hand with a side grip. Practice this a few times in a stationary truck with the engine idling and the clutch fully depressed. Here's another way to use the walls. Shifting from 5 to 6 is the longest shift because you're shifting from one hard wall to the other. Here's an efficient way to make 6th gear. Since you're required to double clutch, why not take care of most of the shift with the first clutch? Here's what I mean. When you clutch to neutral, pull the shifter all the way over to the left hard wall, then clutch again and pull straight down to 6th. Grab a truck that isn't rolling and practice this a few times. Be sure to pre-select 6th gear when you're in 5th by pushing the splitter up. The splitter talks to the transmission when you shift to neutral, so if you're in 5th gear and push the splitter up, you're still in 5th gear. When you shift to neutral, the splitter notifies the transmission that you want the higher gears, and the transmission then makes those gears available. If you shift to neutral and then pull the splitter up, it may be awkward and prolong your shift. Better to get it out of the way while you're in 5th so that you can concentrate on the long shift to 6th. One last item about the splitter. If you come to a stop and forget to push the splitter down before shifting to your start gear, the truck will likely stall when you try to pull forward. Try to remember, splitter down whenever you come to a stop. When you're learning how to upshift, try shifting early to avoid becoming frustrated. Shifting early means shifting between 1000 and 1500 RPM. 10 to 15 is the sweet spot on most trucks. A car with a manual transmission will allow you to shift at almost any RPM. That's because many cars have synchronized transmissions. Truck transmissions aren't synchronized, so they require specific RPMs. Here's a good rule of thumb when you're learning to shift. Try shifting the low gears, 1 through 5, at 1400 to 1500 RPM, and the high gears, 6 through 10, at 1500 to 1600 RPMs. Use that 1-2 speed. Clutch, clutch clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. Remember to push the clutch in just two to three inches when you're shifting. One, two, that's the speed for upshifting. Here's what's happening when you upshift. Let's assume you're in sixth gear at 1500 RPMs and you're ready to shift to seventh. When you depress the clutch and move the shifter to neutral, the RPM needle begins to fall because you're not in gear. If it falls below 1000 before you make your next gear, the truck probably won't go into gear. So what you're really trying to do is beat the needle to 10, which means you're trying to make your next gear before the needle reaches 1000 RPM. If you fail to make your next gear before the needle falls below 10, you'll have to kick the needle up to the sweet spot. Revving the engine once kicks the needle up. Rev the engine by depressing the fuel pedal using a short, quick stab. Avoid depressing and holding the pedal down or you'll push the needle past the sweet spot. If you're having trouble revving the engine to the correct RPM, try practicing in a stationary truck. With the engine idling, the transmission in neutral, and the brakes set, depress and release the fuel pedal quickly and watch the RPM needle. Did it rise to 1000 to 1500? If not, allow the needle to fall and then rev the engine again with a little more force. Push that needle up to 1300 to 1500. Practice revving the engine until you're consistently hitting the sweet spot. This exercise will help build muscle memory in your lower right leg. This is an important skill that you'll use when you downshift because every downshift requires an engine rev. Downshifting is a little different because there's an extra step involved. To downshift, the driver needs to rev the engine while in neutral. So the proper procedure for downshifting is Clutch to neutral, rev the engine, then clutch to gear. Recall upshifting. Clutch to neutral, clutch to gear. One, two. Downshifting is clutch to neutral, rev, clutch to gear. When you give the truck fuel or rev the engine, kick the RPM needle up to 1300 to 1500 RPM. 
If you're having trouble downshifting, slow down before attempting to downshift. Slowing down will quickly improve your downshifts. We recommend slowing down to 1000 to 1100 RPM, 10 to 11. At these RPMs, you can clutch to neutral, rev the engine, then clutch to gear. Kick that needle up to the sweet spot, but avoid staring at the gauge. Glance at it after revving the engine. Take a few seconds to consider what's happening during a downshift. So you've prepared for the downshift by slowing down to 1011. Well, 1011 is at the bottom of the sweet spot, so as soon as you shift to neutral, the needle begins to fall below the sweet spot. To put the truck into the next lower gear, you have to rev the engine to the sweet spot while in neutral. There is no 1-2 timing associated with downshifting because of the extra step of revving the engine. Also, if you don't kick the needle up high enough the first time, the truck won't go into gear and you'll have to try again by revving the engine a little higher. When you're downshifting, the same clutch rule applies. Avoid pushing the clutch pedal to the floor when the truck is in motion or you'll stop the gears and the transmission from turning. When the truck is in motion, the gears must also be in motion. So use two short clutches just as you do when upshifting. Patience over panic is the key to fixing a missed gear. Panic will cause you to grind your gears. Try to control that emotional response and practice this method instead. So I'm going to miss my shift from 6 to 7 on purpose and then fix it the smart way. After I miss 7th gear, all I need to do is find the soft wall and then place the shifter at the opening of the gate to 7th gear. You'll feel the gears turning with just a little bit of pressure on the shifter. Then I'll rev the engine to the sweet spot and the shifter will fall into gear. This method requires patience and the ability to locate the wall that is associated with your gear. If you apply too much pressure to the shifter, you'll create a grind. Light pressure on the shifter is all you need. Show the tester that you can fix a missed gear without panicking. Learning this technique in school will also impress your employer during your initial road test in their truck. If you push the RPMs above 1500, you can still shift and make your next gear, but you'll have to alter the timing of your shift. Shifting at the 1-2 speed may not work, depending on how far you push the RPMs. So, let's assume that you've pushed the RPMs to 1800 without shifting. As soon as you begin your shift, the RPM needle begins to fall. If you try to put the truck in gear before the needle has reached the sweet spot, the transmission will grind. All you have to do is give the needle more time to fall into the sweet spot. You can do this by shifting slightly slower than 1-2. Slightly slower means less than a half a second. So instead of the 1-2 speed, try 1-2. Very little difference because the needle falls rapidly. By the way, if you drive a company truck and you consistently shift at high RPMs, they will notify you to stop wasting their fuel. Shifting early yields better fuel mileage. You'll be a hero if you shift early because fuel is a trucking company's biggest cost. Let's move on to low RPM shifting. If you shift at low RPMs, you can shift the transmission faster. Think about shifting every gear at 1300 RPM. As soon as you shift to neutral, the needle starts falling, but it doesn't have very far to fall before it's out of the sweet spot. To beat the needle to 10, you'll have to shift faster. 1, 2. Clutch, clutch. When you're traveling uphill and shifting, push the RPMs past 1500 and shift at the normal speed. 1, 2. Think about what's happening when you shift on a hill. As soon as you clutch to neutral, the needle begins to fall and gravity tries to pull you down the hill, which makes the needle fall faster. By pushing the needle to 17 or 1800, you're giving yourself extra time to shift because the needle has a greater distance to drop. If you're traveling down a hill, shift early because gravity speeds up your vehicle when you clutch to neutral. Try shifting at 1100 to 1200 RPM when cruising down a hill. When students are learning how to shift to 10 speed transmission, they tend to miss their gears. If it takes too long to find your next gear, the truck will slow down because you're in neutral and you're coasting. If you're unsure of which gear to go to because your speed has decreased, check your speed and do some quick math. If you're traveling at roughly 15 miles per hour, add the two numbers in the number 15, 1 plus 5, and you get 6th gear. 
If your speed is closer to 25, add the 2 and the 5 in 25, and you get 7th gear. 35 is 8th, 45 is 9th, 55, 5 plus 5 is 10th gear. If you happen to be between those speeds, say 30 miles per hour, you have your choice of 7th or 8th gear because 30 is between 25 and 35. The numbers on your speedometer always end in 5. This happens because your brain assumes that the shifting process is complete when you move the shifter into gear. Your shift is actually finished when you release the clutch pedal for the second time at the end of your double clutch. When shifting, you clutch to neutral and then clutch to gear, and as soon as the shifter hits the gear, you release the clutch pedal. Well, if you release it too quickly and from too great a depth, the truck will jerk after every shift. Look at it this way. If you push the clutch pedal in 8 to 9 inches, you'll have to release the clutch pedal 8 to 9 inches. This causes the truck to jerk at the end of your shift. If you push the clutch pedal in just 2 to 3 inches during your double clutch, it will greatly improve the smoothness of your shifting. Pushing the clutch pedal in just two inches means you only have to release it two inches. That shorter distance keeps the truck from jerking.